Are the Jews God's chosen people? Well, a careful study of the Old Testament reveals how God created them, separated them, and protected their bloodline. As a matter of fact, the Jewish bloodline is the only pure bloodline that remains on the earth today. Did you know that? You talk about a clear evidence of the covenant of God still being in place. There is not one single bloodline on the face of the earth that is pure outside of the pure strain of the Jewish bloodline that remains. Israel is the only country in the world that has its same name, is located in the same land, and speaks the same language as it did when God made that covenant with them 3,000 years ago. Again, talk about self-evident that God is not done with them. His covenant remains intact to this very moment and will throughout the eternal ages. God in His foreknowledge had a plan from the very beginning to distinguish a very small nation and a race of people oftentimes called the Jews. Uh, we don't have time to study all of the book of Genesis, but obviously in Genesis chapter 3, after the sin of Adam and Eve and their separation from God and their being cast out of the garden, God made a promise all the way back in Genesis chapter 3 that He, in His foreknowledge, had a plan after the sin of Adam and Eve. If you have your Bible, go with me into the Old Testament, into the book of Deuteronomy, Somebody asked me after this uh, recent viral video that uh, I think is at 1.6, 1.7 million views, and the question, and uh, I, I don't have time to read them all. Please forgive me. I, I pray that you'll have grace uh, in my direction uh, if I can't answer all of the questions that come in. That one video in the last week has generated over 4,000 questions and ongoing. As I speak, that number is now inaccurate because it just keeps going and going. So please show me grace. I wish I could. And you know, there was a time, a long time, when I answered every single question, even when it was to the point of answering over a hundred and some days, 200 questions a day that I would sit and answer and sit up late. I have done my very best, but I can no longer with over a million people studying the Bible with us at least once a month and the comments that come in, you can imagine if one video generates 4,000 questions and comments in less than a week, we've got over 300, almost 400 Bible studies on our channel now. I think you can understand the tsunami of questions that comes in. But I do still scan through and try to pick out some of the uh, common questions and see questions that are being asked repeatedly, and this was one of those questions. Well, where in the Bible? I heard you preach on God, Israel, and final prophecy and war. Where in the Bible does it say that they are His chosen people? Deuteronomy chapter 7, and then this is just one of several passages. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. The Bible said, For you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God. Of all the people on the earth, the Lord your God has chosen you to be His own special treasure. The Lord did not set His heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were the smallest of all the nations. Rather, it was simply that the Lord loves you, and He was keeping the oath He had sworn to your ancestors. To any and all who are listening to me from Israel or anywhere in the world, and you're Jewish, the Lord loves you, and you are His chosen people and His covenant that He made with Abraham and the patriarchs is not outdated. Any Bible-believing Christian that you hear who says that God has rejected the Jews, they're not saying that from a proper knowledge of the Bible. 
The Bible is clear, and for any and all Jewish people, and we have several that listen to us. I had uh, and still have one of my very dear friends in New York City. He's been on our board of trustees, and uh, he and his wife, Jewish, and uh, God loves the Jewish people. It irritates me when I hear Christians pick up a Bible and try to twist the Scripture about everything in the scriptures if it applies to the West and applies to American politics and Washington, D.C. and Republicans and Democrats. I say it all the time unashamedly. I, I make no bones about squaring off with these unlettered individuals who pick up a Bible and try to turn it into America or American politics. If you're listening to any preacher or teacher or social media influencer and they are taking the scriptures and trying to create an identity for the West or for America or they're prophesying about our elections or our presidents or Republicans or Democrats, then please know you're listening to an unqualified voice and you should run from such biblical ignorance. Is that clear enough? Or as I often say, if I haven't offended you, be patient. I'll get to you shortly. The Bible is about Israel and about the Jews. It was written by Jews. It is a Jewish book. We need to be clear in our teaching on this. So there we have it from one passage, and if I had time I could read multiple. But the question, are the Jews God's chosen people? Absolutely the Jews are God's chosen people and that decision is irrevocable. It's eternal. The Jews were, the Jews are, and the Jews forever will be God's chosen people. Question number two, why did God choose the Jews? Well, after the fall of man, Adam and Eve sinned. The Bible tells us in the fourth chapter of Romans, wherefore by the sin of one man, sin entered the human race, and death by sin, every single person listening to me has sinned. From this preacher on down the line, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We are all dependent upon the mercies and the grace of our Heavenly Father. And there is only one way to have peace with God. And the Bible tells us it's through faith alone and Christ alone. Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. John 3.16, the most memorized verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. There is only one way for you to be forgiven of sin and to enter into right relationship with God, and that is through faith alone and through Jesus Christ alone. At the end of this broadcast, in just a few moments, I'd like to pray with you as I've prayed with countless hundreds of thousands of people in multiple nations around the world. Wouldn't you like to know that you have peace with God today? Wouldn't you like to know that all of your sins are forgiven and forgotten. We're going to pray at the end of this broadcast, and I hope you'll have the patience to pray with us at that time. You see, from eternity past, God knew after sin that there had to be a plan of redemption. There had to be a plan of recovery. There had to be a plan. Oftentimes, we refer to it in soteriology as the plan of salvation. In order to save us from the spiritually dead condition that sin rendered. And the ultimate goal of God's choice, don't miss this. If you're taking notes, write this down. The ultimate goal of God's choice for the Jews as His chosen people was a bloodline through which the Messiah would be born. And that, of course we believe to be Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53, the great messianic passage written by that Jewish prophet Isaiah and multiple passages point to none other. Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah. Now, 
Not all believe that. And the Bible says that many of the Jews worldwide, then and now, have veils over their eyes, that they're unable to see that. But Jesus had to come from some nation or some people, and God chose Israel. God first promised the Savior or the Messiah after the sin of Adam and Eve, and later he specifically said that the Messiah would come from the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The fact that God has an eternal future for Israel is evident in that five-sixths of the Bible, five-sixths of the Bible directly or indirectly speaks about and focuses upon the Jewish people. And Jesus is the central figure who brought both Jews and Gentiles together. The high calling for the Jewish people is a calling from God who chose them out of all of the nations of the earth. Question number three, has God rejected the Jews? And uh, I'll try to keep uh, my angst down, but it really irritates me when I hear ignorant spiritual leaders talking about how God has rejected the Jews, rejected Israel, and has transferred his covenant and his blessing upon the modern church. Now, we believe in the modern church. The Bible is clear. Now, we're not talking about buildings and denominations. That's not the pure definition of the biblical church. The church is comprised of spirit-filled believers who have repented of sin and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Jesus prophesied. Many call it the greatest prophecy of Jesus in Matthew 16. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And the church age began in its conception with the first advent of Christ and the church age ends with the rapture of the church and its birthday is the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. The church age is what we are currently living in now. And Paul, in our text in Romans chapter 11, was very clear that God gave a window of opportunity for the Gentiles to be brought into right relationship with God, but only through Christ. Regardless of whether you're Jewish or you're a Gentile, the fact is there is only one way to have right relationship with God the Father. And that is through one, recognizing your sin, two, repenting of your sin, and three, receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And again, we're going to pray together in just a moment as we close this study. Listen very carefully. The church age was given by God, as Paul wrote in Romans 11, to provoke the Jews to jealousy. And then in Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says that Gentiles who receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are adopted into the Jewish family. So if you're a Gentile and you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, read Galatians chapter 3. Through Jesus Christ, we became the adopted children of of Abraham. But the Jews are the pure bloodline with the original covenant, and Gentiles in the church age have been given an opportunity to be grafted in. Has God rejected the Jews? Let's go back to the Bible, and let's go back to Deuteronomy and the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy in the fourth chapter. Listen very carefully to what the Bible said in verse 30 and 31. In the distant future, when you are suffering all these things, speaking to the Jews, when you are suffering all these things, you will finally return to the Lord your God and listen to what He tells you. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you 
Are you listening? Every Jewish person, God said, He will not abandon you or destroy you or forget the solemn covenant He made with your ancestors. I don't know how the Bible could be any clearer than that. God has not rejected the Jews, nor has God rejected His covenant with the Holy Land and the nation of Israel. Let's go back into the New Testament, into our text, and let's read a little more there. Romans and the 11th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. The Bible said, again, the words of Paul, and again, Paul was Jewish, elite, educated, cream of the crop, Pharisee. Paul had every credential of the highest level of Jew. Paul wrote these words, Has God rejected His own people, the nation of Israel? Of course not. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham and a member of the tribe of Benjamin. No, God has not rejected His own people whom He chose from the very beginning. I mean, that passage in and of itself puts a dagger through the heart of replacement theology because it was written after the crucifixion of Christ. It was written after the Jews had not seen Him as the revealed Messiah. It was written after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. So if God had intended to reject and to replace the Jews with the Gentiles who had come to faith in Christ and became a part of the church age, then you're going to have to start tearing pages out of the New Testament. Because many times they'll, they'll point to the Old Testament and say, we now live in the New Testament covenant, and in the New Covenant of the New Testament, the Jews have been replaced by the church. What do you do with Paul's words? Verse 2, no, God has not rejected His own people, whom He chose from the very beginning. So if you're taking notes, let me put it into a summation sentence, and I don't know how to say it any clearer than this. God has not, nor will He ever, abandon His covenant with the Jewish people and the Holy Land, the land of Israel. Lastly, and I close with this question number four, what does the Bible prophesy about the future of the Jews? What does the Bible prophesy about the future of the Jews? And again, Bible prophecy revolves around the Jews and revolves around the nation of Israel. Israel is the most important land in the Bible and in final Bible prophecy. Write that down. Israel is the most important land in the Bible and in final Bible prophecy. Jerusalem is the most important city in the Bible and in final Bible prophecy. Over 800 times Jerusalem is mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. Did you hear that? Over 800 times. Israel is the most important land in the Bible and in final Bible prophecy. Jerusalem is the most important city in the Bible and in final Bible prophecy. As a matter of fact, the Bible prophesied that Jerusalem will not only be the capital of Israel, but after the second coming of Christ and going into the millennium and into God's eternal kingdom, Jerusalem will be the capital of the entire world world. The Bible makes that abundantly clear in final prophecy. But you've heard me preach or teach on this before. Israel is the most important land in the Bible and in Bible prophecy. Jerusalem is the most important city in the Bible and in Bible prophecy. But the super sign of all Bible prophecy, you heard me right, the super sign of all Bible prophecy is the visible, notable regathering of the Jews from around the world back to the land of Israel. Let's go to uh, the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament and the 30th chapter. 
Jeremiah chapter 30. And go down to verse 3. Jeremiah 30, verse 3, For the time is coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people of Israel and Judah. Run a highlighter through that. For the time is coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people of Israel and Judah. I will bring them home to this land that I gave to their ancestors, and they will possess it again. I, the Lord, have spoken. So as we wrap this up, if you're taking notes, two momentous things in Bible prophecy must happen concerning Israel in the end times. First, Israel has to become a nation. These are some of the most important warning signs of final Bible prophecy. And again, they revolve around Israel and Jerusalem and the Jews. Two momentous things that must happen as we come to the end a final prophecy. Number one, Israel must become a nation. That was fulfilled on May 14, 1948. Secondly, the Jews must return to Israel. And did you know that in recent years, we have watched the regathering of the Jewish people from around the world back to the land of Israel? As a matter of fact, write this down in your notes, very important, 2009. 2009 was the first year since the diaspora, Israel was dispersed from their land twice, first in A.D. 70 and again in A.D. 135, diaspora 1, diaspora 2, study it, it's important. But the two dispersions of the Jews, A.D. 70, A.D. 135, they were scattered throughout the earth. And Israel throughout history had many rulers and many peoples who claimed that piece of real estate. But none ever claimed Jerusalem as their capital because they couldn't. Because 3,000 years ago, God set Jerusalem aside as the capital of Israel. And not one of the invading nations throughout all of history that took that piece of real estate ruled from there, kingdom after kingdom, None ever called Jerusalem their capital because God set it aside as a holy city for the Jewish people. And again, as I've already mentioned, it will be the capital of the world in God's kingdom on this earth that is soon coming. So don't miss this. Israel had to become a state and the Jews had to regather from around the world. 2009. Why did I mention 2009? Because that was the first year from A.D. 70 and the second dispersion, A.D. 135, the first time that there were more Jews back in Israel was 2009. God made them a nation, May 14th, 1948. And in 2009, for the first time, there were more Jews living in Israel than any place in the world. As a matter of fact, there were about... Half of the Jews in the world, a little more than half, living in Israel, uh, a little less than half, lived within a hundred mile circle of New York City, and less than 17% of the Jews that remain lived dispersed throughout the world. But since 9-11, and now this war in Israel, the war in Ukraine, well guess what? Ukraine was a highly populated area by Jews. The war in Ukraine has been driving Jews in mass back to Israel. And we are still seeing it, but that prophecy has been fulfilled. I close with this. Israel's future has a couple of more very difficult chapters because the Bible prophesies, and listen very carefully, in the very near future, I will do a teaching on the wars of final prophecy. There are several wars that are coming up in final Bible prophecy, all of which revolve around Israel. What's going on in Israel as I speak is not the fulfillment of the Gog and Magog war of Ezekiel 38 and 39. It couldn't be unless, and I'm saying, I'm not saying it's not, 
but it can't be the fulfillment of the war of Ezekiel 38 and 39 against Israel unless Russia and the leader of Russia takes charge. If you don't see Russia get involved and you don't see Vladimir Putin get involved, then anybody telling you that this is the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39 and the first Gog and Magog war, that would be an unlearned teacher. But there is coming a war, and if this is it, it'll have to evolve into it. But we'll not know it to be the Gog and Magog war unless Russia gets involved and takes the lead. That chess piece is not on the table as we speak. I'm not saying it couldn't. We live in a very perilous, chaotic world and things happen quickly as they are as I speak. But we have the first Gog and Magog war coming. We can't be dogmatic as to when that war is going to take place. It will either take place just prior to the rapture or perhaps could be gearing up during the rapture or after the rapture. The Bible does not give us enough identity to be specific and dogmatic on exactly when the first Gog Magog war is. Thời điểm T bằng 0 vạch ở vị trí có ly độ 2 và đang đi về biên dương tắc tức là đang đi về 4. Như vậy chắc chắn điểm M của các bạn phải nằm M0 của các bạn phải nằm ở đây. Để chiếu lên thì nó ly độ 2 và nó quay như thế này thì nó mới đi đúng không? Hình chiếu nó lên đây, hình chiếu lên đây thì nó mới đi về vị trí biên dương được. Như vậy cái góc phi của các bạn là cái góc này. Và nhìn vào đây chúng ta tính cos phi nè. Xét tam giác này là tam giác vuông nè. Đúng không ạ? Tam giác màu đen này là tam giác vuông nè các bạn. Được chưa? Cos phi bằng cos bằng kề chia huyền kề là 2. Chia huyền là bán kính là 4. Nó ra 1 phần 2. Các bạn bấm ship cos của 1 phần 2 thì suy ra phi này bằng cộng trừ bi trên 3. Nhưng vì nó ở góc ở phần dưới này như vậy góc nó là âm như vậy phi các bạn lấy phải là trừ bi trên 3. Đó là xong cái nội dung câu này. Được chưa? Vậy các bạn đã hiểu về cách tìm pha mà dựa vào đồ thị chưa? Được chưa? Rồi video này đến đây là kết thúc. Cảm ơn các bạn đã quan tâm theo dõi. Và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo.